Uh, still sticking with East African news this time. Kenyan politics on the front burner. Now, ODM party leader Raila Odinga has reiterated his commitment to stomping out corruption in the country if, and that's if, he is elected president in next year's general election. Mr. Odinga, who will be making the fifth attempt at the presidency, also said his social protection policy, which seeks to cushion poor households, will be possible if corruption loopholes in the country are sealed. Now, our East African correspondent, Abdinol Aden, joins us now for more on this. Now, good morning, um, Abdinol. But before Abdinol comes on board, I mean, this is the fifth time we have Odinga coming out, mm. campaigning for the presidency. What are his chances this time around? Even though we know he has had um, some major people who are backing him, he has had a major handshake mm. that a lot of us could see as a positive, um, positive, we could see from a positive light, but really a fifth time running for presidency. And all he can tell, say is that, uh, you know, uh, he will stamp out corruption if elected. It's, many will say, well, is corruption not a big issue on the front burner But he said in, a lot of, a lot of people Kenya. know how to come out and make such big statements. But mm. what is the nitty-gritty? Let's look at you. What, what's your plan? I mean, it's easy for, some, for anyone for, well, to for come For someone out who's running for the say, fifth time at the presidency, having a fifth crack at the shot, uh, it might be a bit cliched in terms of that right. I will stamp out corruption. Okay, now let's ask our man out there in Kenya himself. He's the best place to talk about it. Abdullah, good morning to you. Uh, season's greetings. Now, uh, tell us more about Raila Odinga and uh, what the impression you know, he's got for Kenya, especially with this big statement saying he will stamp out corruption if, that's only if, he gets elected. So there you have it. Now, this man, a couple of weeks ago, uh, declared in quite a packed you know, uh, uh, ground out there in Kenya uh, his fifth <laughs> attempt at the presidency with lots of jubilation and celebration. Uh, some would look at it perhaps as a U-turn after all the handshake, or perhaps uh, uh, hidden uh, well, uh, possibilities of a camp out or a camp in with the powers that be of the presidency and uh, government of Uhuru, Uhuru Kenyatta out there in Kenya. But the big question is how much support uh, will he have uh, going into the election? Is it, will it be financial or just for the backing of the uh, people? Do we have Abdin? Uh, with us now uh, to give us more on this one. Abdin, morning to you. Morning to you to all and Oli. I think my audio is much better now. All right. Uh, so Dinga is uh, talking tough about corruption. The election is not far off. We're going into 2022, aren't we? Exactly. And uh, a very warm welcome to you, uh, Olu and Oli, and uh, receive my uh, facilitations for the new year in advance. Actually, the corruption narrative is one of uh, the key debates and the, the storylines, which actually is going to be repeatedly hard during this campaign ahead of the August 2022 elections. But Mr. Raila Odinga, the right honorable and former prime minister himself, uh, uh, has described himself as, as a personality, an anti-corruption crusader and uh, we know at the beginning of the 2002-2003 coalition government, that time we had seen many government officials, heads rolling. We had the investigations on the Anglo leasing scandal, the Goldenberg scandal, and uh, uh, many more uh, corruption related investigations. All right, now, um, Abdino, some people have come out to say is the consistency for me. I think I believe that his immense experience in governance as well as leadership will ensure that his planned social protection policy of 6,000 shillings for poor household is achieved. Can you tell us what you know about this policy? It became another debate during this ongoing um, early campaigns, even though the whistle hasn't yet been blown. We've had uh, the deputy president, William Ruto, saying that uh, through the bottom-up approach, the poor, uh, the hardworking, the hustling Kenyans uh, will have a better uh, economic survival under his leadership. At the same time, We've had Raila Odinga stating that he will be providing 6,000 stipend support uh, for unemployed and, uh, you know, uh, Kenyan hustlers. And of course, 6,000, which is less than even uh, uh, $60 in today's uh, currency exchange during to the strengthening of the dollar against the shilling. Um, every uh, statement, financial related, economic related, it's further widening the debate in the country uh, concerning uh, who is going to change and what and how. So only and only indeed, uh, the, all focus is now on, not merely on the economy, but on the part of who indeed will Kenyans decide? I mean, who's going to be better between the two? Because both of them have been at the leadership helm. That, that's, the big, that's the big central question, uh, Abdin. I, I want us you know, to bring us to that front page of the Daily Nation in Kenya for this morning, because there was an opinion poll uh, as we saw it this morning from the Daily Nation newspaper in Kenya. And, well, there you have it. 
there is Odinga, and there's Ryla. And uh, from what you can make of it, 33% uh, for Odinga and for, uh, for Ruto, uh, pardon me, on the right, uh, 32%. Uh, your thoughts first, Abdin, on these polls. And uh, should we believe it? Those of us who are not based in you know, East Africa, for those of us around the world watching what's going on in Kenya in terms of the politics and the battle perhaps between these two. Because we do not have alternative polls uh, released at the same time with uh, the InfoTrack uh, uh, conducted research. All we can say is uh, based on uh, uh, the research that they, they claim to have done and uh, the results which we find so far. Um, mathematically and scientifically, they are believable as they have been released with a margin of one. But of course, we know that uh, the current tussle is, uh, presidential tussle is between Raila Odinga and William Ruto, the two strongest opponents. And uh, on the other hand, we've had previous polls uh, putting um, William Ruto stronger than Raila Odinga in different regions. But at the same time, many Kenyans uh, considering the social media hashtag of, on Infrata, InfoTrack, opinion polls, they say this is a reminiscent of 2007, ahead of the 2007 elections, which are uh, highly contested elections, which led to the post-election uh, violence. We've also had similar polls in 2017. So every time these results of the polls are released, Kenyans have uh, two schools of thoughts. One, these opinion polls are being used uh, to just create hope for Raila Odinga. Then when it comes during the the ballot, uh, the results by the IEBC, the elections body, uh, results are otherwise. But at the same time, uh, the other school of thought is that these results are actually, uh, you know, uh, being given to try and uh, convince Kenyans on who to vote for. Therefore, we're expecting to receive many polls, uh, elections-related results um, in the near months uh, preceding the Kenyan general elections in August uh, 2022. Right, um, Abdinol. I mean, people are wondering and are keeping their fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Some other people have said that um, one Kenya alliance needs to merge with either the Ruto party or um, um, the Rallya party, but we just need to wait and see. It's just coming up. A few days we're entering 2022, but o thank you so much. ODM or not, or handshake. I, mm. I think we'll leave it that way for now. Uh, mm. It's getting up quite nicely into the 2022 mm. elections as we end 2021. All right, uh, Abdino Alden, our East African correspondent, thank you so much. We'll come back to you just before we get to the new year to see how things are going out there in Kenya. Of course, and for the rest of the East African Horn of Africa region, we'll keep you updated. All right, All right. thank you so much, Abdino. So